Now let's talk real quick about rowing versus sprinting. Because with our short rows, 200, 500 meter row, two benchmarks. When, especially the 200 meter, the 200 meter is just not good rowing. To maximize the 200, you get members say, how do I row the fastest 200 meter possible? Rowing the fastest 200 meter possible requires really, really, really bad form. And so that's just how it is as far as maximizing. And so there really is a certain balance that we need to play with as far as not making people hurt themselves, but helping people perform because it is, a, a bit, it is a bit of a different change in form. So when we're doing what I just called rowing, the real form, a couple checkpoints. We talked about the shoulders. Shoulders in front of hips at the front. Handle level with the machine. Knees over ankles. That is the cue as far as leg compression goes. From a physics, from a physics standpoint, bio and like bio, a biomechanical standpoint of loading our legs maximally, knee over ankle at the front. And so for me, this is what it looks like. So if you look at this here, you can see that my feet aren't completely flat. They're not because I don't have the ankle flexibility to lay my feet flat. That is okay. And if you watch any professional Olympian row, you'll see vast majority of them have that slight heel lift. Some of them don't because they are extra, extra flexible back here. But there's nothing wrong with having your heels lift up on a rowing stroke as long as we are trying to achieve that knees over ankles compression. That is going to give people the tall person length that they need. Again, it all varies depending on our own height. But that knees over ankle landmark is the compression we're looking for. And that's going to help people get the most optimal long stroke, giving that cue of like, Every stroke, or let's try to get knees over ankles, every stroke. That's gonna be the most successful for any row, honestly, 500 meters or more. You can, you can play that out to like 400 or 300, depending on, on someone's fitness, height, capability, et cetera. And so that's why like a sprinting range, it's hard to give a specific range for that because honestly, like someone who's really short and maybe a lot older, not a lot, a lot of, not a lot of experience, 300 meters is going to take them a while. Whereas if it's someone who's, you know, super athletic and can go crazy, crazy hard, like that's more of a sprint for someone who, it all varies. So it's a bit of a spectrum. But when it comes to things like 200 meters, you get members that are asking you, like, how do you sprint that the fastest? The idea is to have a higher stroke rate, basically more turnover of strokes. And that's because the row is so short, you are better off taking more strokes than you are taking efficient strokes. So the only real change there is the leg compression. And instead of going knees over ankles, you go to the point right before your heels lift. So for most of us, that's gonna be about right here. But notice everything else about the stroke. I'm still seated exactly the same. I've still got shoulders over hips. I've still got the handle out into the machine. But when you don't, because our muscles work as like rubber bands. Like, they, like if you overstretch them, you can't, you can't activate them fast enough to go back. But if we can stop ourselves right before essentially our quads stretch too much, we can get a really high turnover of strokes. So it just comes from kind of stopping yourself short and coming back up. Now if you watch like the world records being pulled on, on YouTube for this type of row, you'll notice that their leg compression doesn't go past here and it's almost all hip swing because they're just taking as many possible strokes as possible with barely any leg drive because it's just about that high volume of strokes. So I think the middle ground, instead of doing that, is to help coach members say, let's see if we can shorten up our range of motion, keep your feet planted on the foot plate. That's all. So, but still keep that same lean and swing. Everything else stays the same, just shortening the leg compression and then try to aim for a higher stroke rate. So those are really the only things that would separate normal rowing from what we see in almost any case compared to like a 200 meter row. Some athletes on the 500 meter row, like that technique, that like shorter feet planted technique, some of them can use that, but that's not something that you would want like everyone to use. So I would say maybe if like it's a talk with like, you know, six foot four, 220 pound Johnny, who's like really gonna kill this 500 meter row, you could tell them to, to work on keeping the feet flat. But for most people, you would want to stick with even that longer knees over ankles rowing for things like 500 meters.